So five videos, all designed to keep you moving, get you off your feet, keep you healthy, physically and mentally. Okay, so how we're gonna break these exercises down is into three categories. The first category is a floor exercise, the second category is chair-based, and the third is on your feet. So this first segment of videos, we're going to break down all our bodyweight exercises. I'm gonna to try to give you a big library to give you loads of different options. And we're gonna break down all bodyweight exercises into four categories. The first category are floor-based, the second are chair-based, the third on your feet, and the fourth, a hybrid, which really don't fit into any of the other categories, um, but are some, some people's favorites. So we're gonna start with the first, which is floor-based. We're gonna give you progressions and regressions of the usual type of exercises. For instance, we're gonna start with press-up. So we're gonna start with a normal press-up and then everything that you can do to make it easier and some the things that you can do to make it harder. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna put a little circuit together to give you some ideas. So the first uh, exercise we're gonna do is just a, the, the obvious one, a press up. So what we wanna do is come into a start, and start with a normal one. We're gonna do a normal press up, which is hands underneath your shoulders. Where you can go wrong is taking them too wide, too high, so you take the chest out of it and it's too extreme. Um, so you want to make sure that your hands are just below there. The first thing to think about, and there's two things, is as we come down, we retract the shoulder blades apart and then drive them um, away on the way up. So we want to make sure that on the way down, we're squeezing them together, opening the chest out, and then squeezing away on the way up. The other thing, and the more important thing is to think about is what's happening here. If you, particularly when you're doing a full press up, you think you've got the strength to do a full one, but sometimes you get back pain. That's probably because you might be what we call sagging at the bottom of the press up. So you've got a good awareness about the upper body, but you lost what the body, or lower body's doing here. And it starts to dip and that's compressing there. So what we want to think about is tightening up at the front and kind of tucking it under. Essentially a press up is a plank, but just moving. So you've got to think about what you're doing at this element as well. And one of the things that I coach the clients on doing is when we're coming down is to think not to drop the whole body, which can sometimes lead to this, but drop the chest and leave the bum up a little bit. If that's what you need to cue, that sometimes works. Now, that being said, the easier option is to obviously bring it down to the knees again. What we can sometimes find is we drop, so we want to bring the shoulders to the floor and then drive back. And, uh, and another alternative is if you have a buffet, down and up uh, or here. Same that you could do with a chair, because I know everybody has different sort of heights of, of furniture and stuff like that. <coughs> so be inventive with ways that you can make it easier. Um, this, the, the, the things that we're going to do now, we're going to make it a little bit harder. So, so for a slightly different flavour, you can use anything like a, a buffet here, two options there, or a chair, and use different uh, gradients as well. Uh, of stuff like stairs, you know, that's a really good one. Feet at the bottom of the stairs, your hands at the top. If it's any, if it's any easier for you there and you want to just go somewhere in between a kneeling and a full one, there's loads of different options, so be creative. So if you want to make it any tougher, um, without the use of any equipment, there is loads of other ways that you can use equipment, but that's what we will add in another video. Uh, first thing that you can do, just like we raise your hands, and put your center of mass down into your feet. Now, for the opposite, we can raise your feet up and put the center of mass now into your upper body to make it a little bit harder. So, feet raised here, still keep the same things that we said. So tight core, make sure you don't sag at the hips, slide the shoulders apart, drive up. Another way that you can do it is, uh, and by the way, I'm not going on to my uh, fist for any other reason other than I've got a little bit of a, of a wrist problem. So here, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go tighten with my elbows, drive back. What I'm doing is I'm making it a little bit tougher and using more of my triceps here 
uh, and obviously a, a, a popular one is coming hands close. However, personally, I don't really like that one because it. this is just my personal opinion, it puts a lot of stress down the side of the wrist. So I like to just bring them narrow about body width and then drive out. But the thing that you're looking for is keeping the elbows narrow. Uh, and because it is a more of a harder progression, not dropping the hips like we said earlier. Don't let them hips sag, keep the core braced. On to the next thing, which is a plank. So a plank is obviously essential and it's really overlooked because it's not sexy, is it? You're just holding a plank, but Fundamentally, if you know how to get a plank right and you know how to get your core engaged in the correct way, you know the progressions and regressions, it can be super, super effective in getting some um, strength in your core, but predominantly the type of strength in your core that also protects your spine as well. So, what we want to do to set up a plank as always start on, on the knees with a client because I coach them from that point, whether they feel they're strong enough to do it on the toes or not, we will get to that. So firstly, we want to make sure on your forearms, elbows under your shoulders, on your knees, and you just wanna keep your hips up. They don't wanna be up here, but they certainly don't wanna be down here. So you don't want your thighs touching. We want our knees touching, possibly even just the bottom of your thighs if you're on a carpet. From there, what I want to do is if you focus on where my hips are, watch what I do at my hips. I want to tuck my pelvis under. Now, I'm not sure if you can see from the video because it's far away, but you'll see me shaking, if you see me in person, quite a lot when I do this, okay? So I'm going to pull it under, I'm going to hold it, and then what I'm doing now is I'm creating tension between here and here, which is called the anterior core. And that's really where the abs, the rectus abdominis, the muscle that you're trying to work, that's where it runs from. So what I'm trying to do is I'm creating in my mind as much tension as I can. I'm coming into a crunch. My elbows and my knees are staying there. And me, I'm in between this point, I'm creating a tension in between my abs. Um, and what that does is it gets that static strength. And if you get that right, you will feel yourself shake straight away. And that's a good sign. For many people, even people, right, like myself, who can maybe, you know, go for quite a while doing a normal plank, should come onto your knees and should get this right here. And for a lot of us, that's as much as we need to do. Because now I can really feel that working. If you feel like you can progress from there, same thing. Stay on, go onto your toes. Um, pull the hips up, tuck them under, create the tension, and now I'm really shaking. So I'm trying to create as much tension and I'm holding myself in that zone all the way through. And obviously, I don't want to forget to breathe. Checkpoint then, elbows down under your shoulders. Stay on your knees to start with, build up to your feet if you can, but practice on your knees. Hips up, raise them up, then tuck them under, tuck the pelvis under, think. I'm going to tuck my tailbone under. I'm going to create as much tension from here to here and crunch, crunch, stay in that crunch and stay in that shake zone. When you hit that shake zone, that's where you want to live, but don't forget to breathe. So to add a slightly different flavour to the plank, because... Uh, it's going to get boring. You're stuck in your house for, for a few weeks at least. So other things that you can do, same, uh, same idea. Hand plank, simply you're in a press up position, like we said, keep the wrists under the shoulders. We want to hold here and then tuck the pelvis under and hold that position. If you get this right, sometimes this can actually be a little bit tougher uh, if you really get that um, crunch in there, which is what we need and then holding there. If you want to uh, build up from there, bring your feet wider, sometimes really wide, we're gonna take one hand away and hold it. Now what we wanna avoid is, as you take that hand away, the thing that you're gonna focus on avoiding is this, that little twist. Now, now my body's um, compensated and it's gonna try to make it 
easier um, all the time. So when I take my hand off, I want to avoid that. I want to. That's why I'm going to bring my feet wide before I lift it. I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to really focus on holding myself square, and then I'm going to hold it from that point. Another one that you can do is plank up downs. Um, if you've ever done any classes, uh, Les Mills like to do these as well. So you might have done these before. So we're here, up, up, down, down, and then up again. As you can see, this is good one for classes because it could go to the beat of the music, but in the same fashion that we talked about with the hand plank and taking anything off the floor, any time a limb goes off the floor, whether it's a hand or a, uh, a foot, you want to make sure that you avoid this. Okay, so this is what it could look like if you don't think or it's too tough. If it is too tush, tough, come down to your knees, do the same thing. Okay, but if you think you can do it, challenge yourself up and down. But don't uh, go too, uh, for, for too many reps without thinking about where the form is in your hips. Try to always keep hips square. And if it's going, just go straight down onto your knees and carry on. Another one that you might want to do to throw in a little bit of extra flavor is just using a simple object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on my hands. I'm gonna go foot, feet about uh, hand width apart. So I've got a nice rectangle and I'm just gonna move an object across. Just give you a different focus and I can go down. Do whatever you want, do whatever you want, but make sure in your mind you set a little bit of a routine. You give yourself a certain amount of reps Never forget what the ultimate focus is though, and it's to avoid this. If I start to move, I want to drop down to my knees. And guys, remember that dropping down to your knees is not failure. Failure would be going and going and going, even though you're going past your body's ability to hold itself in. Because especially in a plank, a core type move, um, you want to make sure that you're not pushing the boundaries too much because then it defeats the object because other muscles will take over. Doing harder options doesn't mean that you're gonna get more from it. Feeling the right muscles working and being happy in that zone and slowly over time building up to harder option is the thing to do. Another one that gets overlooked as a super beneficial core exercise is as well your side planking. So a side plank, it's no different to doing what you did earlier. Uh, remember last time, here and here are going to be the focus. But really now it's between here and here. However, it's the same thing. So I want to crunch between my ribs and between my hip and squeeze hard and push that up to the ceiling. Then I'm going to hold myself. Don't forget that your shake is good. I want to make sure I'm breathing, but still engaging there. Don't allow any sagging here. And um, the other options, obviously, are to come down to your knees and squeeze through there. And the same idea applies. Just because it's harder option, technically, doesn't mean that you'll get better from it. You need to make sure that the right muscles are working. Next one, mountain climbers, uh, is a bit of a, an upright sort of position. You're in a plank, hand plank position and you're essentially running whilst trying to avoid any movement side to side. So I like to do two options, and they are jump and switch, or running. Another floor-based exercise that's good for your core is very similar to the object move uh, and it's shoulder touches. So exactly the same way you want to be knees or hands squared off, touching the shoulders and avoiding any of this. So you want to lock it in tight. If you really, really think whilst you're doing the movement, what's my hips doing, what's my hips doing all the time and you feel them moving and you can't, you can't correct it, come down, and you're still gonna get the benefit. So 
So another set of floor based exercises that you can do uh, will be laying on your back. We're going to start with some basic sit ups. Get these right. Okay, so what we're going to start with is just relax on the floor. I'm going to just leave my feet on the floor with the knee bend. I'm going to take my hands up here and I want to slow crunch up and back down. Slow crunch up and back down. Now this doesn't, might not look like I'm doing much on the video, but what I'm doing is I'm taking momentum out and I'm trying to make sure that my abs are doing all the work, 100% of the work, which as you can see, doesn't result in much, but in the end of the day, when you isolate your uh, any muscle, it's not as strong as you think. I could easily do this and come all the way up. I could easily get somebody stood on my feet and come all the way up. Um, but I know that that's not going to maximise the um, engagement in my actual muscles. So what's the point in the end? So staying in here, up and back down. Just maximising, coming as high as I can, squeezing it and then the other side. Don't just drop, but use the abs to lower down like a break. So I'm up here squeezing it and then slow down. Might not look like that, but it's hard. <laughs> Another variation of the sit-up that we can do is to bring your arms up. So we're going to keep them up and down. Exactly what we just said earlier. Now this is a slight progression of what we just did. If you want to go somewhere in between, don't forget, the length of your legs are your leverage. It's easier if I keep my legs long and I lower myself down and I want to sit up than it is if I bend them. Because the shorter my levers, the harder it is. So if you need to make it easier, straighten your legs out and tense them quads and do the exact same thing. Exact same thing. So another variation could be raising your feet off the floor and doing what we sometimes call a V-sit. So a V-sit up, as you'll see in a sec. Um, what I want to do is, I'm just going to start by keeping my legs bent, arms out. I want to crunch up, control it, and naturally, as you can see what I'm doing as I come down, my legs, like we said, the leverage, are just helping me balance out. So as I come down, I straighten my legs out. As I come up, I bring them in, because if they stayed out, I'd overbalance. Same likewise, if I didn't leave them out, I wouldn't be able to get back up when I come back up. So straighten them out, bring them in, out, in. So another set of exercises that we can do that are ultra beneficial. Uh, in my opinion, they are better than just sit-ups because they have more functional uh, usability to them, are leg raises. So what I'm going to do with the leg raises, I'm going to be laid down. Now, naturally, I have a, a bit of an arch. We all, most of us will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just focus and feel where that is. Now, Ideally, I don't want to leave my hand there. I want to keep it here. But for now, what you want to do for the first couple is just put one hand there, another hand on your stomach. And then what we're going to do is tighten the abs up, bring them off, up, and then control. Now, what you're aiming to do is you lower down now is avoid any raise of that lower back away from the hand and away from the floor. If it does, then what you want to do is you want to start with your legs up, keep it pressed towards it, but not crushed. You don't want to come out of that natural arch. You just want to hold it by tensing the opposite side, the anterior core. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to come down. Let's say that this point I'm raising off, then I'm going to come back up and I'm going to go again. So now we're asking you to really keep that intrinsic feedback and thinking about what's happening here and here. One way that I see a lot of people getting this wrong or just finding an easier way is uh, sticking a hand under the bum. And if you know by now, you'll know you're one of them people who do it. Uh, can't do this, that's too hard. So boy, if I stick my hand under my bum, oh shit, I can do loads, what's all that about? Well, obviously that's because once I take 
my hands under my bum, I pull my pelvis under, and I'm just using, all this I'm doing now is just all hip flexor, which is an ultra strong muscle. But this is now a closed circuit. I can do this all day, but I'm not getting my abs. Usually that tells you if you want to get your abs, and that one's too hard, but you can do that and you can do loads of them, that tells you something. It means that your abs are not being worked as near as, as they should be. So instead, do what you don't want to do. Go into the tough bit, stick your hands on your stomach, focus on where this is in relation to the floor, lower and keep it pressed in, pressed in, pressed in, pressed in. If you start to go, your one option is to drop the feet, start again at the top, and then start again, press, 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 press. let's say it's gone, now I'm relaxing. Or the other one is a little bit tougher, wait until it starts to go, then pull it back up and start again. Um, it's entirely up to you. I'll probably recommend lowering and lowering and lowering until you feel like the back's raising off the floor and then let it go and start again. So you're basically doing like what we call an eccentric lower. Relax, go again, go, 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 relax, go again. So that's if your back is raising and you, you can't correct that, you can't push it back into the floor. However, if you keep doing that, it will do eventually. Another variation of uh, the leg raises is to go to a point where you can feel your back pressed into the floor. Um, let's say there might be for you. And then we're going to do scissors. If you feel like your back's hurting or you feel it here, just bring it up. Or we can go across. But remember, this is not the focus. You can do whatever you want with your legs. This is the focus. Push the back into the floor. If that goes, the, uh, the exercise is pointless. So remember, that's the focus. When that goes, you, you finish. Don't give yourself 40 reps to do and 20 of them are good and 20 of them are total shit. Remember, that's the focus. I go until my back goes. If I can't correct it, that's it. I rest and then I do it again. So another good option is to come into a sit-up and do essentially a Russian twist, but with a little variation. So think what's happening again at your body. What I, want, what I usually do is I start people with a straight leg and then as they get better, we'll get a slight bend at the leg. So if we start here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tense my quads. I'm gonna do what we call thoracic extension. I'm gonna push my chest out. And what that does is it exposes the core. For some of you, that's gonna really load the core straight away. That's perfect. If you're still not feeling loads of tension, you can lay back, lay back, lay back or you can bend them legs. Then what we're gonna do is when we're at a point where we're a bit of an angle, the chest is out, I'm gonna put my hands onto my chest, elbows pointed out, so that in my peripheral I'm focusing on the points of my elbows. What I'm gonna do is keep my chest out then, and I'm gonna imagine that I've got a pole running from my head through my bum into the floor, like I am one of them horses on a merry-go-round, and I'm gonna just twist around that pole so my torso is rotating. If you get them things right, angle, chest out, keep it out, and twist. Don't side bend, okay? You don't wanna be doing some weird dad dance. You wanna be twisting and rotating. Think that the core's a sponge, you're gonna twist, twist the sponge. Uh, wring all the water out, right? You're gonna get a massive uh, reaction and you're gonna feel it in your obliques. Uh, and it's really good for uh, your core stability um, and stability around the core in helping the spine um, stay healthy and, and protected. So now um, we're going to do some seated based exercises just with body weight. Obviously first you need a chair or a buffet, something like that. And we're going to do uh, just a couple. First one, uh, dips, so working on the triceps. I'm going to bring my legs straight as the harder option. I want my elbows tight in. so. Imagine that this pointing back, down and up. As I drop, I want to keep the chest out. So I'm really going to get a good bend. And then if I really want to accentuate the muscle contraction in my tricep, I want to squeeze it at the end. So I'm going to accentuate that flexion at the end. If it's a bit too tough, just bring the knees in and do the same thing. But don't forget that you've got to keep that chest out. Otherwise, what you'll end up doing is some kind of weird... Um, motion that I will explain on camera. 
Um, after that, so that's dips, we want to work your triceps. The next thing we're going to do is another core base one. We're going to be here. So I'm going to do another V-sit, but this one's just a knees to chest. So I'm going to, I can put my hands on here and just like we did with the V-sits, the body's just going to take its time, but it's going to balance out. As my legs go out, I lean back. As I come in, I come in. I'm just keeping, keeping that rhythm. 